Chapter 5, Books and Records. What are they? Why should we be concerned with them? Why is everyone else concerned about them? And one of the reasons why is the fact that we all have this chance of being ordered. And if you've ever gotten a letter that says something to the effect that laying all other business reasons aside, you're commanded to bring down your books and records. Now, if you're taking this course, chances are you're going to know what those are, and this kind of letter isn't going to cause any kind of anxiety, emergency calls to your lawyer, your accountant, what do I do? Oh my God, I'm being audited. It's definitely an inconvenience, but if you follow my procedures, my simple instructions on how to create your books and records, you can rest assured that you're pretty much going to be audit proof. Now, what I mean by that is not that you're going to be exempt from being audited. Nobody's exempt, and nobody can guarantee that you're not going to get audited. What you can do is, with the help of a good accountant, you can definitely reduce your chances of being audited by reducing the red flags such as filing late, not checking off all the boxes that are supposed to be checked off, and filing timely and giving the government what they want, which is a clear, accurate return. So because of the fact that nobody is exempt, and for whatever reason, there's a lot of different reasons why people get audited, but being audit proof means that you have followed the instructions laid out by the IRS that say your books and records must clearly reflect the income and deductions that are reported on your tax returns. Now remember what I keep saying is that your books and records are really the documented story of your business. Now, the question is, what kind of story are those books and records showing? Is it a horror story? Is it a toy story? What is your story? Do your books and records show to an outsider, in other words, somebody that has an idea of what books and records are, what financial statements are and how they should be laid out, would that person clearly understand how you came up with the numbers that are on your tax return? Now, another question is, well, what kind of records do I have to keep? Great question. We've gone over this already, which is you need to keep the kinds of records that are going to prove, that are going to verify those transactions. Now, if you remember what the IRS says is that your record keeping system must summarize. In other words, they don't want to see a whole conglomeration. They don't want that garbage bag system. They don't want the ignore system. They want a system that is neat and organized so that they could take those breadcrumbs, that audit trail, and simply work back from the tax return to your balance sheet, your, your income statement. Take those numbers, see where you got those from, which should be your trial balance. The trial balance, those numbers came from a general ledger. The general ledger, those numbers came from those journals, which is really just a list. Your journals is a listing of your transactions. Now, if you want a more detailed explanation of what your records are supposed to be, again, I'm going to refer you back to publication 583. And they in that publication, they detailed what we call supporting documents. Now, the picture that you're seeing here 
is not a good record keeping system. This kind of record keeping system will get you in trouble. <laughs> okay? It's got to be neat. It's got to be organized. You should have file systems so that if an auditor says, I want to see this transaction, you can quickly and easily pull out the check stubs, the bank statements, those supporting documents, the invoices, the canceled checks. These are all supporting documents. Now, you can also have your books and records in electronic format. That doesn't exempt you from still having to have an organized system. In other words, you can't give them your QuickBooks file. They don't care about QuickBooks. I've never seen an audit where they said, let me see your QuickBooks file. The truth is they're going to want to see the documents. So you could keep your document system, your books and records, in an electronic format. In fact, in Chapter 6, we will be going through the awesome paperless file system. And as it stands now, the way audits are conducted, I don't care if it's the IRS, the State Department of Labor, State Sales Tax Department, Homeland Security, anybody that would come to look at your books and records, they're going to want to see the paper documents. So in today's electronic world, the government actually allows us to keep our documents in an electronic format. But when it comes down to it, they're probably going to ask us to print those documents. So just be prepared. Now, I could foresee in the future, the government will allow us to just give them a thumb drive, email, whatever the documents that they're asking for. In fact, I could see that happening and almost being a requirement. The same as electronic filing is a requirement now. Now, here's an important note, and this goes back to uh, Chapter 4 where we talked about uh, bank reconciliations and accounting controls. So what the IRS is saying here is that most small businesses, the source of the, trend, of the information is usually going to come from the business checking account. That used to be 98% true, but unfortunately in today's electronic world, a lot of transactions are done electronically, either done through credit cards, debit cards, PayPal accounts. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that most small businesses only have one, maybe two accounts. Now, if you remember back in Chapter 4, I talk about containment, centralization. This is essential. This is basically what the IRS is saying. They don't want 15 different accounts spread out all over the place. They don't want to see a tax return where you're taking deductions from your personal account. That's all going to get you into trouble. Now, another question I get a lot is how long should I keep my records? Now, remember, if you're keeping your records in paper form, that's it's going to be an issue. You don't want, you don't want to keep your records forever. Now, the rule of thumb that I tell my clients when it comes to a tax return is a three-year statute of limits. But if there's other issues involved, uh, if you've underreported your income by 25% or more, they can go back a little bit longer. Uh, the, if you want specifics, you can go again into that publication 583. But here's the thing. If your records are in electronic format, which I highly recommend, the length of time <laughs> becomes almost irrelevant. Space, electronic space, is, is practically free. I mean, we're up to terabytes now, and you only reach that if you're saving videos. Paper documents being saved electronically is almost virtually free. 
the only cost involved is really the time and effort to scan and name those documents, but even that is less than the time involved in handling the paper documents. So the fact of the matter is that the length should become less and less relevant the more electronic format you have your records in. Some records you have to keep forever, whether they're in paper documents or electronic format, such as contracts, uh, documents of organizations, certificates of incorporation, records such as that. Now, there's also what we call the de minimis rules. And this is a rule that has to do with, listen, the amount of my expenditure is so little. I just spent $8 on a taxi cab drive. Do I really have to keep the receipt? And the answer is no. What the law is, there's nothing in the law that says you have to keep a receipt. If you look at the law, it says that we have to document our expenses and substantiate the amounts that we've spent. So at some point, we draw a line into how much documentation do we need. And I have, uh, I know some people that are, some friends that are former auditors, and they even told me that if it's under a certain amount, they're not even going to look at it. But that doesn't mean we don't have to keep a record of it. Now, the way that we keep the records is the, is the real issue. And the way that I keep the small expenditures is through my petty cash fund. So we document it through our bookkeeping system, and there's a couple of different ways. If you remember back in Chapter 2 where I showed you how I kept track of my ice cream business, these were all small amounts, and I recorded everything in my journal. That's sufficient. Now, how much? It depends on the kind of business that you're running. So with an ice cream truck, the amount would be very small, you know, $10 or less. But if you're running a construction company, $75 is more of the role. So again, like most of the stuff with the IRS, it, it depends. It's got to be logical. It's got to be reasonable. And sometimes with my clients, I have, if they have employees that are spending, for instance, is a construction company client and their employees are constantly going to Home Depot, plumbing supplies, wherever, to get small tools, to get some nails, just some small supplies. And they're spending $10, 15 $20. The owner doesn't want to give everybody a, a credit card. So the employees are going to go in their pocket and we have them fill out a petty cash receipt. They bring back the petty cash receipt, you know, handwritten back to the, the office. We keep the, the receipt, put it into a journal, and that's our, our documentation. There is no store receipt. There is no taxi cab receipts. There are no, you know, small receipts. And that wraps up Chapter 5. We're almost halfway there. And I look forward. I hope you've had as much fun on books and records as I have, if it's possible to have fun on, on, these, uh, on these chapters. Hopefully it was informative. And I will see you in Chapter 6, where we are going to go, go through the awesome paperless file system. Over and out. Thank you. And that wraps up another awesome episode of Bedrock Bookkeepers Online Academy. Joe DeCharry here inviting you back to our site, bedrockbookkeeping.com. Check us out for the latest and greatest offers. 